guys. Good morning. Um, today, I'm going to do Vita, but it's going to be a, like a day-long vlog of little clips. Um, I can't get to sewing until I get the lawn mode, because if I get the lawn mode, then we can do no, all of our weekend to just goofing off. Um, thrifting, we might drive up to Hendersonville, I don't know. Whatever Scott wants to do or, or whatever he's up to. Um, with this new position, he's working a little bit longer hours. So he needs a down weekend because last weekend we didn't go work on the house, but we worked really hard up here to prepare for the termite treatment. So I'm thinking this weekend he needs a goof off weekend. So we're going to go do some stuff and um, we'll drag you along with us. We might even go live over the weekend if anybody wants to keep an eye out for that. Um, I think he has a lot of fun doing the live because he can interact with you guys. So I'll see you later. I'm off to mow the lawn. It'll probably take me about three hours because um, I use the push mower. I figure I need the exercise anyway. We have a riding lawn mower. Well, it's a Gravely tractor and I have no clue. I leave the Gravely tractor up to Scott. Um, <laughs> I grew up around tractors. I was sat on a tractor with it running and told to make it go straight at real slow speed to pick up rocks or hay bales and stuff. That's the extent of my experience driving a tractor. I never learned to fully drive a tractor on the farm. I was just sat on the seat and told to make it go straight and then periodically somebody would jump on the tail from behind and scoop me over and they would go on back to the barn and I'd ride on a leg or a, a fender. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't think a lot of farm kids um, get that experience anymore because of safety issues. I don't know. Y'all, if anybody still lives on a farm and you're growing up, let me know. Do you get to uh, kind of drive a tractor and ride on a tractor with your, your uncle, your grandpa or whatever? Anyway... I'm babbling. I've got to get this lawn mowed. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay. I mean, I wasn't in that shower maybe 10 minutes. Maybe less than that. Like 7 minutes. And this one, you can see, he can't leave things alone. Stop! Look what he's done to this colored pencil. Leave the scissors alone. Tippy is like having a constant 3-year-old here. Aren't you? And I left him here, and while I was gone, overnight, he got that leg injured again. See? So from now on, he's going to have to be Mom's shadow and go with me down to the house, aren't you? Get out of stuff. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, just a quick um, little comment about this Scott and I are gonna try to do more vegan meals and um, cut back on the fats and sugars so I'm gonna look up some recipes and go to the grocery store and hopefully by the time I get back from the grocery store this camera will be charged up so I'm gonna look through this for some recipes and we'll do a review on the recipes later on okay bye Hi guys, just thought I'd come on real quick. We're doing a little bit of drive around downtown Greenville, South Carolina, and we thought we'd share a little bit of it. We're on Academy Street. It's a lot of new apartments going in and all kinds of housing. And We were noting that some of the old mill villages are getting um, revitalized. Uh, revitalized. I like that. The sun's the other direction, so I'll just film this side of the street. We just drove by where Scott's mother uh, grew up. Which is on Pendleton Street. There's Bank of America. Bank of Ripoff. <coughs> I don't either. 
They charge so many fees for everything. Every, every time we turn around, they charge you a fee. I'm going to go so that less of the dash shows. Sorry, guys. All right. Well, there's the phone company. Oh, that's where your daddy worked, right? Yeah, my daddy worked 36 years in Southern Bell. He got his start in that red brick telephone building. Switchman. Yeah, uh, over there on the right. Uh, yep. Red brick. Everybody's in a hurry. Well, it's Friday. It is Friday. And we had Chinese, and it was so good. And mm, yum, yum, yum. oh, the sweet lady that usually waits on us is going overseas for three or four months to visit her family. I don't know where she's from. I don't know if she's Thai or Chinese or Japanese. I don't know. She looks Chinese. She's just the sweetest lady ever. And that's where Scott's dad worked there when he was in Greenville. And yeah. then he worked in the telephone. On the Baker, in the Baker building, downtown Columbia. I, I know we don't have any kids, but I want to go in that children's museum of the upstate so bad I can't stand uh, it. Doesn't look interesting like that. would be cool stuff in there. It just looks, uh, it just looks like it'd be fun. Because they got the big colorful man out front. And there's the library. There's another art, there's an art museum. And there's that Greenville little, little theater. And the library where we went one night for a humanist activity that says coca-cola on the side of it but now it says museum and gallery don't forget we'll be going by uh cb station where i was on romper room and then i was on uh monty's rascals <laughs> <laughs> oh look at the sunset it's gonna be pretty i think we're gonna get stopped at every traffic light yep. traffic light I'm having trouble with words tonight. I don't know what is wrong with me. <laughs> when I was on Romper Room, I was profoundly disappointed to find out that the magic mirror was nothing but a ruse with the camera. Uh-oh. <laughs> I went home and told my mother. <laughs> it's it, not even real. It's fake. It's not <laughs> magic. It's, it's a trick. They play with the camera. <laughs> Because I was looking, when they were trying to lead us away, I was looking back and I wanted to see how the magic mirror worked. Always trying to solve problems. It was just a trick. <laughs> That's like when our son Greg was little and his Scott's mom gave him a buckeye. And they're supposed to be good luck. Bring you good luck. Bring you good luck. Well, he had it in his pocket and he went to school. And he came home. He got in the worst trouble that day. <laughs> oh, he got in the principal's office and everything. And he just came out and he to the truck where I was waiting for him. And he goes, you can keep your old Buckeye. I was like, <laughs> what happened? He said, all I did was got in trouble all day. It don't bring you luck. It's, a, <laughs> it's just dumb. He said, yeah, terrible day. <laughs> you can just keep your old Buckeye. Oh, okay. I know where I am now. Yeah, we're on uh, Rutherford, which will soon turn into Old Buncombe. Yeah. There's the Triune Mercy Center, where the homeless folks can get a meal and maybe, maybe a, a bath or sometimes a bed. Maybe a hot bed on a cold night. You can tell the seasons are fixing to change. The insects, have, their song has changed. And starting to see some leaves change. Yeah, I was noticing that today. I love that house right there. Oh, yeah. That is gorgeous. But I'd never live on this street. All, I can't do all this. All the grasses are getting their uh, seed tops on them. So yeah. It it's, won't be long and it'll be cool weather. Yeah. See, there's YFF four, the TV station where I was on TV when I was when he was a little guy. Five, six, 
<laughs> this place here, um, this brew pub. Yeah, it's a brew pub. They do um, handcrafted. Well, of course, now it's not called that anymore. Now it's Radio Room. Hmm. have a radio room. You do have a radio room. <laughs> we'll need a house at least big enough for our hobbies. Yeah. My Aunt Marietta <clears throat> worked in a candy factory, candy plant on here called Metters Candies. And uh, sometimes we'd go pick her up after work, take her home. Cause she didn't drive. She never learned to drive. She'd come out to the car and get in the car. She'd always have samples for us. The yeah. seconds and stuff that she got out of the employee store. And, uh, she'd always smell like whatever candies they were making that day. If they were making peppermints, she'd smell like peppermint. Or <laughs> if, she, if they were making chocolate, she'd smell like chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> they never had any children of their own, so they doted upon us. We ate it all up. <laughs> yeah. You caught your very first fish with them, too. I did. I was six years old. Caught my first fish, a little, little bass, about a pound and a half. And that's where, that's who we buy our fuel oil to heat our little, the cottage with. I'm going to need to call them to fill us up here soon. And when Daddy uh, dressed out the fish and Mother uh, cooked it, I kept an eye on it. All throughout the process, I made sure that I got that fish to eat because <laughs> I caught it. That was your fish. That was my fish. <laughs> All right, my arms are getting tired, and we're almost to the Home Depot. So I guess I'll let you guys go, and we'll wrap this up when we get home. Bye bye. Okay, so Callie's going night-night, and so is Tippy. And I doctored on Tippy's paw. Now I'm going to close your, close your eyes. <laughs> and I cut Scott's hair for him. But what I'm going to show you is we have interlopers that our cats are not happy about at all. I have to be quiet because they'll run. Okay, let's see if we can see them. Do you see him back there? That's Hissy Prissy and her offspring. Oh, there's two more left under there. Scott likes that one right there. He says, that's a Dalmatian cat. But if I can, I've found where I can take them and uh, turn them into a rescue. The little black ones run. See, that's why I think I'm going to need help to catch them. So that's where we'll end today. And I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. And we'll chat with you tomorrow.